Uh, she's from Swindon, but we went all over, basically seeing all of her friends. I started Car Wash Tapes Come in 2009 when, you know, uh, I was releasing music under my own moniker, the Wolf of Brimley's at the time, and I thought, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm, I might as well just slap a label name on it and I'll call it just, you know, like I've come up with every other name that I've used for either songs or for band names have been in, it's just been the first thing that popped into my head that made sense. And so car wash tapes just magically made sense, and I'm not sure how, but it, it, it did. I realized that kind of that, and I wanted to re release music by other people, and, and I think kind of the focus that I wanted to take was I wanted to get the artists that either were kind of limited in their exposure, so you might so you might get somebody you've you know never heard of before, or if they're a little bit more well known, I wanted to get kind of the side of them that is completely different from everywhere else you see. And I think that what I've done so far is kind of embodied that sort of spirit. The tapes have always had this kind of appeal to appeal to me because they're kind of the format that everybody can get into. I mean, this is pretty evidenced by, um, you know, you. I don't, a lot of you probably grew up with, you know, the Fisher Price My First Tape Recorder. It's just a little, it's, you know, it's a little plastic tape recorder, gigantic plastic housing, so no small parts, so kids can't get things in their mouths, except for the little microphone, which is attached by this little wire. I wish I had one here, but unfortunately I don't. It's back in my parents' house. I should bring it over. Um, but you know, even even little kids like had this sort of majestic connection to tapes. It's like you put this weird thing in, you close it, and then you talk into it, or you yell into it, or you hold, or what happens when you hold the microphone up to the speaker? You know, these crazy sounds show up on the tape. You know, it's something that you know even a small child can understand and learn to appreciate. I mean, when I grew when I was growing up, I used to make little radio shows on my uh, on one of the random boom boxes in the house where I would, you know, pretend like I'm the DJ and play songs off a CD or off a record or something and record them on the tape just like I'm really on the radio, you know, I'm a big famous DJ. And that's that's why I think that for a lot of people they haven't really lost their their luster. Um, because it's you know, you have these things that pretty much any any person can understand, put the tape in, press play. I don't think that there has been a format before or since that has been kind of more accessible to everyone. And that's why I think it has such long-term appeal. Well, what I like about dubbing at home is that you kind of see, the, you know, the whole product kind of from, you know, you've got a blank, you know, a little blank cassette and you know, you control kind of everything about the process. You control the sort, you control the source material, you control exactly what goes on the shelves. You even control the tapes themselves before they're before they're sent to you because you can tell the manufacturing company to, okay, I want this color shell, or I want to spray paint it, or I want to do, you know, something like that. You have kind of every piece of control through the whole process, and then dubbing at home makes you feel like you're not, you know, you're not just I'm going to send away for this to be done and they'll come back done and I guess it's the sort of appeal of having the final say over everything. It's maybe just being a control freak but I don't know, it, it makes you feel a little bit more connected to what you're producing, you know. Basically a piece of bismuth magnified. Usually I'll ask the artist, you know, do you have something, you have a concept in mind for the artwork? Um, do you you know, want me to do something about it. It basically varies between, you know, from artist to artist and tape to tape, I say, well, you know, what do you want to do? Is there anything in particular you want to express with the art? Or is it just something that you want the music out there and I can kind of run with it and make my own little interpretation? Because um, I know I'm not a visual artist, and I basically tell everyone that I talk, everyone that I talk to about doing a tape, I'm not a visual artist, um, but I can do my best. So, you kind of open it a little bit, oh, it still looks like a farm. Let's open it all the way. 
Yeah, that's a that's a lithograph of some kind of wound of somebody's foot. I think that cassettes, as I as I mentioned earlier, that they have this very lasting appeal. Um, whether or not people will still be releasing tapes ten years from now or twenty years from now, you know, it probably. I mean, like today, you're not going to walk into a Best Buy and be able to pick up a new tape by you know, some random top 10 artist or anything like that. It's just, it just doesn't happen anymore. Um, but I think that, like other formats, they'll have their own little niche. So some of these have things like, this is probably has Rage Against the Machine dubbed on it from, you know, carried a Walkman every day when I went to school.